What's up guys and gals and welcome back to exactly where we left off in this episode. We need to expand our industry. We don't really have a choice. Like we need to get it going right this second. Otherwise, everything is going to be bad for us. So let's go to the industrial menu and figure out what we can do right here. A textile mill is really, really expensive, but it would take the edge off some of the problems that we have. And so I'd love to get the textile mill in like right this second. I would love it. But I don't think it's going to work, so instead, I think we're going to be stuck expanding our plantations. I'm going to put a tobacco farm out here. And then I'm also going to put a... Can I do two tobacco farms? I can. Let's do dose tobacco farms so that we're producing tobacco. And can I put another one in? I would love to put in a third one because tobacco is a killer crop. It is amazing. I'm not saying it's a killer crop as in it's going to run you down and eat you. But damn, it's, uh, I think those big rocks in the way are causing a problem right now. Or is it because, oh, it's there's unexplored space. Balls. All right. Well, we'll put in another coffee place then. That'll work. There we go. And so let's put in the road so that these can be serviced properly. And so there it is. It might take these a little while to get built, but I think these three extra buildings should allow us to make a tad more money and also put more people to work because, as I can tell, the unemployment problem is pretty much jumping right now it is popping so we need to put some people to work and i think two farms is precisely the right way to do that so off go the little construction workers the allies have sent us a little bit of money to keep us afloat i was indeed correct in saying ooh, that was our post export numbers okay so they haven't fixed the tropical problem where sometimes they don't export everything you have on deck it's okay we'll survive we will be in the red by the time we get to our next export cycle but it'll still turn out okay all right, workers there. Let's go ahead and increase the budget. And the workers out here. We're probably going to have to build them houses too because we want them to come out here and work here. And they won't do that unless they've got places to live. So our first, our first tobacco farm is up and running. Our second one should be up and running very, very shortly. And then our third farm, which is going to be a coffee plantation, should be up and running as well. And so with upgrades, we should be able to make our canneries and everything work. We've got the cash right now, so I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to leap. And we're going to put in a textile mill wherever it will fit. And so we will now enter the age of Sweeney Todd where small children are trying to stick their arms and legs into various areas in order to fix them. And you must work 14-hour days even though you're 5 years old. So there it is, textile mill. And now we are officially incredibly, incredibly broke. And so this next period should be very, very interesting. But I think if we curl up in the corner and we assume the crash position and we hope that everything's going to work out over the long term, we should be okay right here. I think we'll probably dip into the red pretty aggressively for this one cycle. But in the interest of making things work, we can reasonably assume that it'll take the textile factory about a year to break even. Good idea. That's what I was thinking myself. Throw money at it and it will solve itself. If it doesn't, throw government at it. Okay, and so if we, we have an objective right here where we can issue the Urban Development and Industrialization Edicts, which means that our building costs will be reduced by 10% for five years if we accomplish this. So let's go ahead. Let's have a look at the Edicts menu. Now, I haven't talked about Edicts at all during the course of this playthrough because these are kind of... These are situational things that you can put into play that can adjust certain gameplay variables and whether or not you use edicts, it's very easy to play an entire game without ever using any edicts. It's also very, very useful to use edicts every now and again just to make sure that certain things work. And so what they wanted is they wanted industrialization and they wanted urban development. If you put urban development, most of these have a cost. And if you pay that cost, good things happen. Now if they're free, if they're free, it typically means something bad is going to happen later on, but you get something right now. So, for example, the wealth tax. Totally free, and you get a bunch of revenue based on the rich and filthy rich tropicans on the island. However, those citizens lose a bunch of wealth, and they lose respect towards the regime, which means you're probably pissing off the capitalists. Or you can implement martial law, which means there's no elections, the crime goes down, liberty, tourism, and everything else goes down. However, unrest goes up as well, and so basically this allows you to squelch your entire society in exchange for a little bit of unrest later on down the line. I would say building permits the one that I really should put in. All buildings get more expensive, but that expense is applied to your Swiss bank account by 50%, so that's a pretty good thing to have too. Mr. President, the world has changed. We need to create a dystopian future where everything is bleak. Words like that will be a real hit in the future. Okay, and so in the interest of making Fallout a reality, we're going to try and build ourselves two industries. Now, we already have one because we have this lumber mill down here. 
This should be number two, and then we'll be okay. When is the next boat coming in? Because that number's looking awfully large in red. 15,000, I think, would just about take the edge off for now. At least buy us enough time to get our industry up and running before everything else goes wrong. Is anybody working out here? Oh, good. Splendiferous. People are indeed working out here. I think it's... Cash flow has increased. My books on psychology say I should offer you a reward so you'll start making smarter choices more often. Ain't that the truth. You invite somebody to be one of your advisors and they take cheap shots about your punctuated smart decisions. They're like, well, the period of deficit in between your smart decisions is far too large. So it's like smart decision, then 10 bad decisions, then one smart decision. So I suppose I'll go with a cheap import trade route to take the edge off of our coal imports. Go to our trade menu and we're actually going to be canceling this one out right here. So this was an open-ended contract. It's 584. We'll remove our ship from that. We'll go back to the mining and logging menu. And we've got an additional very, very cheap trade route from Venezuela still for 389. And it's a 10-year contract. So we can't ent we can't exit out of this once we sign it. However, I think that is a good plan. That means that we'll pay about... We have six cycles per year. So 1800 We'll pay about $18,000 over the course of the entire contract, but we'll end up with 45,000 coal, which is an item that we have no way of getting ourselves. So there it is. The Mary Jane is now off, and she will hopefully take care of all of those things for us. That ship is away. Our next export cycle is pretty soon, and so we're just going to hang tight. The textile place is going to bail us out. That's what we're waiting on right now. This is going to generate a huge amount of cash. We're just sort of waiting on it to break even first, and then once it does, we should be all right. These buildings out here, their productivity might hit a slouch based on the fact that they're really, really far away and it's going to take the Teamsters longer to get them to the dock. However, the other option we might consider is opening up another dock over here for all of our agricultural regions. I said agricultural, that's not a thing. All of our agricultural regions are going to go out and spread out like this down this way. And so we may consider doing it that way. Now, we did get steel mill for free. I didn't know if you guys noticed that, but when we set up the two industries, they gave us the steel technology for free. I'm going to go for dry dock as soon as table managers are done so that we can actually get rid of all of the fog of war in our city. We're looking okay right now, though. I'm pretty happy. I do think that the time we're spending... How are we doing over here? Have they broken even yet? Oh good, they've already broken even. However, we don't have enough workers as of right now to ensure that their output is going to be what we're looking for. So, we may still be hanging tight for the next little bit. So hang tight with me. Everyone clench everything that you have. If you have something that is unclenched, clench it with me and hopefully we'll be able to get this resolved in the near future. Cotton plantation isn't full of workers. I probably ha should have had an open borders policy. I think that probably would have been a better way to go about my business, just so we could get as many immigrants as possible. 15,000 in imports coming in, 25 new citizens. Let's take a look at... Here is our latest scientific data. Foreign diplomats are 45% more prone to agree with us if our diplomats fart less often, or if they at least stink less. As a part of a cross-group study, we also found that 33% of foreign diplomats do not like belching at the table. Finally, a staggering 95% have indicated that they have a very negative opinion of our diplomats singing the national anthem while standing on the top of the table naked. Who would have thought? I'd be like, who's the 5% that's totally okay with it? I mean, I'm just looking at it from the other direction, but that's just me. We're going to go with the dry dock technology so that we can unlock all of our fog of war and we can build unimpeded because as of right now, I don't feel like spending money every time I want to expand my society. It may be time to start thinking about developing a little bit more aggressively with regards to where our citizens can live and where they can participate. It's blocked by another road. Let's go from there then. And what I would prefer to do is to go down like so. Yeah, there it is. We'll put in a road right there. We'll try and put in roads elsewhere, but we're going to try and put in some houses down here so that people have places to live because I'm willing to bet that probably our homeless problem is growing on us. Oh, it's not that bad. We're actually a little bit ahead of it, so we'll go with, I don't know, maybe a tenement down here somewhere. We haven't built, how expensive are tenements, by the way, 3,000? Okay, let's go with a tenement. And the tenements degrade over time, which is a little bit disappointing. I like the way that the tenements worked in previous games, where they were about as good as you could do when you upgraded them. They were pretty decent. Right now, tenements are basically kind of a short-term solution to a long-term problem. Mr. President, 
My research shows that both domestic and international customers pay much less for Tropican products than they can actually afford. And as you know, a penny lost today is a million lost tomorrow. So they want us to do paid health care. I'm not going to do that. We're going to actually abandon that one because I want to make sure that everything stays free for all Tropicans while we're here. The war has the price of steel rising steadily. We should capitalize on that right now. Yeah, that's actually not a terrible idea. I'll accept that one. I can't guarantee that it'll get done right now, but I will accept it for the time being because we do have an iron mine on our land, which means we should be able to end up with a decent amount of steel someday. And so our expected revenues, we're starting to survive. We're actually staying in the black the entire revenue period, so we should be all right. Our fiscal, our fiscal monetary financial issues appear to be sorting themselves out very, very slowly. But that's the name of the game with Tropico. You guys will remember back when I first played Tropico 3 or 4 on the channel, I had told you that... Did I face this the wrong direction or what's going on here? No, it's okay. Do we have nobody working here or we have no input? We have no input. Okay, so... Wait. It's saying we have no input, but there's very clearly input right here. Interesting. This might be something that I am... We can increase the workshop a little bit. I'm interested to figure out that usually what this means. Some production cycles are not producing. Yeah, it's because we don't have any wool. So, okay, that's what it means is we're not producing any wool right now. So it's just something that I can't fix. Once dry dock is done, let me continue building roads out here to the... Uh, stupid fog of war. Okay. Well, let's start developing in opposite directions, I think. Like, maybe developing out here is the plan to go with at the moment. So I don't know what to put along these little roads or whatever. Actually, no, we're going to work on this. Let's see what upgrades we can do to the tenement first. We can electrify it, and it's going to give them better housing quality. So let's go ahead and electrify it. We're going to go ahead and do the old electro thing right here. And that should allow us to at least keep people slightly happy. And we have 21 homeless at the moment. We have 12 people that are unemployed. And with those 12 people who are unemployed, how educated are they? They are high school educated. So we need to come up with high school educated jobs for them. And I think the best plan is probably to upgrade this right here to a workshop expansion. It'll give us six more spaces for workers who are high school educated. Actually, let's save our money. We're going to go for a cannery right now. Let's continue working on our industry. So there's our cannery. If you've ever been to Monterey in California, they have a place called Cannery Row. And I think a lot of seaside locations do have a Cannery Row. But that's where all of the objects like the clams and the fish and everything else that used to be their main exports were canned. And that was like the main source of the wealth for the city. We're going to try and make our own Cannery Row right now. We're going to put all of our industry in one spot. That's going to end up giving us some serious pollution problems. But we'll fix those down the line once we've got the means to fix them. I would really love for our research to finish with dry dock. How long do we have here with dry dock? Dry dock is on seven months remaining. Okay, so we're almost there. We're moving slowly towards having the compass technology. Monetarily, we're also recovering. We may want to think about coming up with llama farm somewhere so that we can get wool. And so I will place those wherever they will fit. So llamas like the highlands, huh? I don't know anything about llamas, so it's all new it's all new news to me, or I guess you could just simply say news to me. This game is really, really finicky about building on inclines, by the way. It doesn't like to do it. It really, really hates to do it, and I wish I could fit something in there so that we didn't have a large highway in between. I would rather have one city than, you know, a bunch of extended cities, but anyways. We're gonna start this location out with a bunch of llama ranches. And we will deploy I suppose two of these bad boys over here. I don't know if they're bad boys. Llama ranches might be the bad boys of the ranching world. I'm not really sure how that whole thing goes out. I don't know if they have the caballeros with the largest cojones or what, but they do consider themselves to be the bad boys, and so we're just going to go along with that and not complain too much. Homelessness may also be in relation to the fact that there's no houses out here for these people to live in. I'm still waiting on the fog of war to piss off for that to work properly. This still hasn't collapsed, huh? 
Well, I wish that they would do this a little bit quicker. What I can do is I can shift it over slightly once they run out of trees. But as it stands right now, we're just going to have to deal with what we have. Yep, we're just going to have to deal with what we have at the moment. We just got another import. We got another revenue stream right there. We want to start installing some houses out here while we have the opportunity to do so. So let's go ahead and put those in. We also want to put in a garage so people can get in between the two different regions faster. So we have kind of East Tropico and West Tropico and we want these to be able to, we want people to be able to commute in between the two very, very rapidly. On the llama farm, we have shaving pens. Let's go ahead and put these shaving pens into motion. We also, now that we have roads that are running out here, it's not a terrible idea to start a iron mine. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we've got our iron mine being built, which means we can then put in a steel mill later on. But it can wait. It can wait right now. I also think it might be a good idea. Okay, so we've completed the compass. I also think it might not be such a terrible idea to put in a logging camp out here somewhere that can do its own deal and supply us with a bit more wood for the future. As you know, if there's one thing you have to ensure for the future, it's your supply of wood. And there you go. There's your giggity moment of the day. We're going to research socialism next, which is going to allow us to have a couple more. It's going to literacy program. It's going to give us subsidies. It's also going to give us social security, which I think are edicts. I'm not exactly sure what those are going to do for us. Continue increasing the job quality of everything that we can. And then also, let's put in a few houses out here through our residential menu. And so whereas everything else doesn't like to be planted out here, I think we can get away with... See, even the houses don't like to be on inclines, and it makes it very difficult to build, unfortunately. So what I can do is let's cut a road. It's going to go out this way, and unfortunately the forest is just going to have to suffer for now. Is that curving on me? I can't tell. Hold on, let me... Either way, if it is, we'll just kind of make do. Yeah, I think it is curving slightly on me, but it'll have to work out. And then let's see how we can situate our farms up here, because I know when we go into high altitude places, we should be able to grow new types of farms, so or we should be able to plant new kinds of ranches and plantations or whatever. So coffee's doing pretty well up here. Can we get any cocoa in yet? No, but we can do corn farms. Although I'm not really... Tobacco grows pretty well out here. We can also do a couple more sugar farms or sugar plantations. So let's go... Oh, I don't know. Like maybe two of them? There we go. Two sugar plantations out here, and then we will use the extra space to put in houses for all of the workers. So country houses it is, and we'll just kind of line the whole thing with those. And we're running out of money, so I'm going to slow my roll slightly. I was just picking up momentum, though, and I always get excited once I start picking up momentum. Give them a little dirt road so they can get in between their jobs and everything else. There it is. And so we're looking pretty good right now. We are wearing some slick shoes at the moment, and ones that I'm not so worried about. Export's looking a tad weak on this cycle, but it should be enough to keep us in the black. And we want to build in this direction now. Very, very badly. So let's go ahead and start with a long road that just goes out that way. And I don't even know where this is going to go, but I'm going to kind of enact sort of a Hawaii-esque highway system where we have a highway that runs the circumference of the entire map and just gives us the freedom to sort of develop wherever we want to. I could shift that lumber mill over our sorry this logging camp over slightly. I keep getting the names wrong and mixing and matching. You'll all have to bear with me while I do that. I think it's also probably in our best interest to make another road right here. And then we'll do something like that. There we go. That looks great. I actually really like that. And so we'll put some houses out here too once we have a little bit of extra cash to scrape up. Our next export cycle is going to be enormous. It's going to be like 45 or 50 grand if I'm not mistaken. This might also be the time to set up another dock through which we can start doing more imports and more exports. We can target our exports, by the way, if we really wanted to. Right now, we're just sort of exporting to wherever. Oh, that ship came a lot quicker than I expected it to, so maybe not. Maybe our next export, I wasn't paying attention at the months, or at the months to next ship. Reward, but have a little something extra from its roots. 
I'm going to go with more communists on the island, just because communists seem to be our bread and butter faction, although I got rid of a certain... Let's do religion. We've got to focus on religion for a little bit, otherwise I think they're going to get super amped out and just want to murder us. We'll go for a church around here somewhere. Put a church right there. And we'll also drop a Catholic mission in around here. So actually, we could probably just go one church on each side of town. Yeah, there it is. So we'll put a church right there, a church on the other side. That should boost us a couple of points. Yeah, so we're already up to 75%. What's this quest? The world is at war. I may not be an expert, but now would seem to be the time to build up one's military power. You never know what might happen. Yeah, it's probably in our best interest to build ourselves a couple of military bases, too. I'm going to hold off on it for right now, although I will modernize our fort so that it's a little bit more effective when we go up against the enemy. Can I upgrade these at all? Ah, we can give them all machine guns. So let's put machine guns in each of these buggers right here so that if the invasion day ever comes, we can wipe the enemy out a little bit easier. I don't know if these are going to be replaced later on with, like, AA guns or anything. I have no idea how the long term of this game plays out. But I am interested to see how the later game plays. We've got imports just in time, just as we went for broke. And so there it is. We're back up to the 26,000 regions with everything. And I think I'm feeling a little bit like... Ah, religious freedom on the rise. Ooh, 80%. Yeah. Making a little comeback with the religious. Jobs everybody's pretty happy about. Liberty's looking good. Housing's looking a little iffy so far. Entertainment has actually taken a dip lately, so we probably want to put in a couple of new taverns, a couple of new restaurantes around everywhere. Got a little bit of extra money to do so, so why not start supplanting some restaurants here and there? How about that? We'll leave that as our next adventure. And there are better places to put restaurants than others, but for now I'm just going to kind of deposit them where I see fit. That two over there... We've used up a lot of our equitable space right now. We'll drop one right there across the street from the... Uh, across the street from the factory. No, nope, not going to fit right there. I will give these guys a tavern out here, though, because they are working hard, obviously. So let's give them a tavern to work with. Stupid trees are all up in my way, and I can't see worth jack, but everything should work out. We'll increase their job quality right here. We will do that, and then we need to give them a road so that they can start exporting the iron... I don't like that at all. So maybe go out a little bit further and then take an ancillary road and put it right there. And so now that we have a road that's running to this location, we are exporting iron now. And we want to target where we send our iron to. I haven't decided if I want to side with the Axis of the Allies just yet, so I'll probably sit on it for a little while. I need to put in a steel mill as well. We're going to have really bad pollution problems over here, unfortunately. But I don't think it can necessarily be helped. Put in a road... And another one right there. And that'll leave a space for another country house. On this side, we will continue doing the same thing, which is dropping a few more houses in. And we are just about tapped out on cash. I think this is a great spot for us to break off the episode anyways. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Tropico 5. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody. And I do.